Today in the lumber yard we're going to talk about brace pocket layout on a timber by using the square rule layout method. But you need to understand a few things about square rule to begin with. In square rule layout, the timber framer or the jointer envisions that inside of this imperfect timber there is a perfect timber with ex perfect 90 degree corners to exact dimension. Usually that dimension is a half inch under the size of the timber. This is a 6 by 8 so the inner timber is five and a half by seven and a half. If we cut our joints to that perfect inner timber on every timber in our timber frame, then the variability or the variable size is irrelevant. It doesn't matter because we're cutting to that perfect inner timber. To make it easy to measure and to lay out our joints, we slide that inner timber over so that this corner is the outside of the timber. And I have an example to show you here. Here's my 6x8 and the joint the inner timber is a half inch smaller. So from here to here is seven and a half and from here to here is five and a half. Using my big L layout template, I drew those lines with a sharpie so that you could see them on the video. On this timber which represents a tie beam in our building, I've inserted the brace. I've drawn the profile on the surface of the timber of the brace pocket or the brace mortise so that I can visualize what the inside of the timber is going to look like. I removed the brace. We can inspect the pocket and see that it slopes down. It's inch and a half off the reference the adjacent face and an inch and a half thick because that's what the frame designer has recommended or established as a frame layout rule. When we look at our drawing for this mailbox post beam and we look at our general frame rules or general frame notes. Number one says joints are laid out an inch and a half off the layout face and an inch and a half thick. So this is the reference face or adjacent face. Then it's inch and a half. Then it's inch and a half thick. Number two says all joints are framed down to the next half inch in size. So this is the reduction where we reduce this joint down to a half inch under the seven, the six by eight to seven and a half. So this surface here is that inner timber that I showed you earlier. And when we look at the end, here's the tenon, inch and a half, inch and a half thick. Here's the reduction down to that inner timber.
Rule number three says bents are laid out from the west except the eastmost bent. In my other videos, I've shown you the reference edges and reference planes. And this rule says if this was a gable and tie beam, this would be the outside of the building. Now, the question that was posed to me recently was what do you do about the inner bents? Either one or two bents in the middle of the frame between the gable ends. Well, in this case, on this plan, he has designated that all bents are laid out from the west except the eastmost bent. So that tells us the bents in the middle of the building are going to be laid out from the west. Now, that isn't true west, it's plan designated west. And I believe I've talked about that before. Now the question was put to me, what do you do when you have a timber and you want a brace pocket in the middle of the timber so that the brace is centered. Here is a timber with a brace pocket cut in the center. I laid out the brace pocket on the side as if this was a post and this would be a right hand post with the tie beam up here and this is the brace going up to the tie beam. In order to compensate for the variability of the timber because if this is eight and an eighth then this is more than a half an inch. If it's seven and seven eighths this is less than a half an inch. I've taken my combination ruler and set it for seven and a half on my combination square and I've taken my second mini combination square and set it for that exact distance. Now that I have that set I can check for the bearing point which is right here and shown right here which is the end of the leg of the right triangle and the intersection with the hypotenuse and I can check here to make sure that that housing is the correct depth. In this sample piece the housing is cut way too deep. I can see that here by checking it with my mini. This means that when I put the brace in, the brace is going to be too short. So it's very important to cut this housing to the exact location that it should be. I hope this has helped you to understand how to cut a brace pocket centered with a square rule layout and a housing.